Hello everyone. This is a quick follow-up video on my previous uh, video that I published on decision tree classification in R. And uh, in the previous video, I've uh, provided the link here if, uh, if um, you have not seen that video already. Uh, highly recommend that you see that video first before proceeding to this video if you're interested because uh, uh, I'm going to be rushing through quite a few things which have already been explained in this video. Um, so in the previous video I had um, given a demonstration using uh, decision tree classification in R and uh, leveraging R part uh, and I did mention that there are several other uh, packages uh, that provide uh, the ability to build decision trees. Um, so in this particular video I wanted to quickly showcase two other libraries. Uh, again these are two libraries that I've used in the past but um, there are several several other libraries. And uh, one of the things you'll notice is that while ultimately all these are based off of uh, decision trees, um, the algorithm, uh, there's uh, slightly, uh, they're, they've been tweaked a bit, uh, in, uh, you know, differently. So you'll find that different libraries give you different results or possibly different results. Now, why is that important? Broadly, two reasons. Uh, so one, um, you, you possibly want to identify which is the best uh, decision tree library that suits your specific um, business logic and works with um, your sampling uh, data. Uh, the other um, reason is um, if you're using R and um, uh, the output of that or the model around that, you wanted to replicate that in a different environment. Like let's say for example, your data science team is working with R, uh, but um, the, the logic has been provided to uh, say the IT development team, the big data team and a data engineer who's working on say for example, uh, Apache Spark sees a different result set than what you see. It's possibly because of uh, the difference between the algorithms used uh, uh, between R and um, say whether it's Python or whether it's a different um, uh, solution like uh, as I mentioned Apache Spark. So that's one of the things uh, or the second thing you'll want to keep in mind. So let's actually dive into the demo. So um, I've uh, pre-written the script here. Uh, so if you haven't installed these uh, packages already uh, you'll want to do that. So uh, for the R part, um, the visualization for the R part, uh, the tree and uh, the evolution tree. Uh, so uh, much of the code is uh, pretty much picked from my previous demo, so have a look at that video. Uh, but essentially I've uh, created a, uh, um, a random sampling uh, using the iris data set. So, so we have a training and a test data. Um, so this uh, part of the script here is um, from my previous video, so I'm just gonna run it so that you, uh, you see what uh, what the end results are. So again, um, we are trying to predict uh, using decision trees um, against the iris data set. And um, again, this is uh, based on random sampling. So um, in this run, you can see uh, the error rates here and here's the visualization for the chart. So uh, that's for the R part. So again, I've covered it in more detail in my previous video. More interestingly, for this video are the other two uh, libraries. So here we have the tree library. Uh, so you'll notice all the libraries pretty much use the same syntax um, or the parameters, if you will, more or less. Uh, so it's got the formula. So here we are um, trying to um, use it against a class uh, species. Um, so uh, against the same data set. So if I run it for the tree, um, so you'll notice that uh, for the same data set, uh, it, it's uh, not significantly different. In fact, there's <coughs> sorry, there's no difference here. You'll also notice that um, uh, one of the benefits of working with R part is uh, that it gives you nice visualization, but whereas with uh, the tree, it, um, you have to resort to the out-of-the-box plotting capabilities in R. Uh, and then finally, um, the evolution tree. So uh, again, pretty much same set of uh, parameters there. Uh, so if I run that, um, again, you'll notice that in this particular run, uh, the, the error rate was uh, pretty much the same. Um, uh, one of the things you'll notice is that evolution tree gives you a much richer visualization capability so that you can actually see 
uh, um, you know what the model um, you know how it's uh, performing right here so now let's um, let's try and run it a couple of times uh, again because it's based on um, random selection it's hard to um, you know know exactly when we'll get uh, differences in data uh, so let's just run it a couple of times so in this particular instance um, pretty much um, everything looks about the same let's uh, give it another run here uh, you'll start seeing some differences so uh, you'll notice that um, the evolution tree uh, we have a 96 percent uh, but here using tree algorithm we have a 98 and here again we have a, a 96 percent um, so uh, looking at uh, these two um, it it seems like um, you know the, the errors were pretty much identical uh, let's run it again yep uh, here we are seeing again uh, the um, the tree algorithm seems to have done uh, better um, however I, I've run this a couple of times and consistently tree uh, uh, algorithm seems to have uh, m much lower error rates um, that's a good thing but again uh, it's uh, it's also a case where my the data that I've selected uh, is more um, you know suited to that particular algorithm so if I've changed the sample data uh, chances are uh, in the real world uh, maybe a different algorithm would have proven more effective but uh, that's not the objective of this video it's uh, really to showcase um, some of the different uh, um, uh, tree decision tree uh, libraries that you have in R. Uh, again, this by no means is a, a comprehensive list. Um, there are several other uh, decision tree based algorithms as well in R, and I encourage you to take a look at that. All right, uh, see you guys on the next video. Thanks, everyone. Bye.